This is a short video. It seems that I must not be explaining myself very well. I'm going to try for the last time to explain what my pocket hinges are and how they work. Okay. This here is the first evolution of the pocket hinge. And let me zoom in here. You'll notice that it's flat on this side here. That's because I used to, when I first started doing the pocket hinges, butt this up against a, uh, the trailing edge. Well, I have since rounded this uh, edge off, and we've recessed them into the trailing edge. Now, if you look at the tip there, how it arcs, it never moves away from the trailing edge. Now, one of the guys from Brazil was asking, what is the advantage to this? The best advantage I can show you is, <laughs> they're free. If you put tape on them, they're they're not going to be free. Not like that. Tape hinges. The next thing that I like about the pocket hinges is <clears throat> that they're cool. I mean, they look really nice. Nobody, you know, no, not many people do them. And they're not very hard to do. And I've done several tutorials on how to install them, how to make them. Uh, my Thunderbolt stabilizer video 1, 2, and 3 shows you exactly how long it took to make this. Less the, the silk span and the finishing, I might have two hours in this, and that's it. So it's not any more difficult to do and uh, it's a hundred percent I mean they're free you can't uh, you can't get any more free than that the next advantage I think is that everything all the fits are wood to wood meaning that the, this is a wood hinge that's glued to the wood stabilizer, not plastic to wood. So there's no dissimilar joint. Now, I show in a video how I achieved this concave edge. It's not very hard to achieve this groove. Now this is the piece that I had to steam to get straight and that's all right and <clears throat> you want to keep the bearings for the flap horn on it on the hinge so so that everything's in line and how that operates is is one half the distance so if this is a 3 8 thick flap you have to move the hinge line back into the hinge three sixteenths, half the distance, in order to keep the leading edge of the uh, flap or elevator inside the groove when, as it's rotating through its motion. A little care has to be taken to make sure that you have the clearances. I mean, you don't want it rubbing. You don't want to have wasted your time making a super free uh, piece of equipment only to have it rubbing so you know spend a couple extra minutes on the fit but it's not that difficult and as I state once again throughout the range of movement there's zero hinge gap so is that a benefit couldn't tell you I don't know I never used to do it like this. I never saw the difference in 
I did see the difference of taping the hinges almost hit the ground. <laughs> the uh, the uh, tape was, you know, very sticky. It made my didn't make my controls very free. Bill Warbridge and I talked about taping the hinge lines, and he said last resort. So you know, each guy has their own way to go. Paul Walker, I believe, tapes his hinge lines. Bob Hunt tapes his hinge lines. So, some guys do, some guys don't. I don't know. I don't like it. I thought I, I would, uh, you know, do it this way. And as I've stated in uh, many of my numerous videos on this subject, this is not my original idea. Uh... I saw I saw them in uh, 04 from Barry, uh, you know, uh, I think it was Reminger, or, and I saw them on other Yatsenko airplanes, and I just thought, hey, well, that's cool, and it had been explained to me in the 90s, but I couldn't figure it out, and then one day, it just, the light came on, and there you have it. So, I'm going to just make this a short video, I'll post it up explaining my thoughts on the on the gapless hinges I love them they work great so is it worth it I think so so we'll see you on the next go around till then fair winds